welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. I call this tale the Clothes Pigs. It starts in the countryside with all the pretty animals on the pretty farm. There was Gertrude the duck and Daisy the cow and Incy, Wincy, Nibble and Titch, the four little piglets. They were the smallest, cutest little piglets you ever did see. Careful, cried a solid sow called Bertha as she plied on the practice bar. Honestly, you runts, I've seen ballet pumps bigger than you. <laughs> Incy, Wincy, Nibble and Titch were tiny when they were born, but they never grew bigger because they could never get near their food. If you've ever seen pigs eating, you'll know exactly what I mean. It is not a pretty sight. This uh. meant that Incy, Wincy, Nibble and Titch were always hungry. And a hungry pig's got to eat sometime. It's just a question of when. <laughs> Close by, in a big city unused to seeing pigs on the street, lived a misguided boy by the name of Truman Snuffle, or Truffle for short. Truffle was a slob who treated his home like a hotel and his parents like slaves. He used his father for all the heavy tasks around the house, such as carrying him up and down stairs or opening a toothpaste tube, and his mother for everything else. Never offering to clear up after she'd cooked him a meal. Never running his own bath. Making his own bed. Ready. Or switching off the television. And never picking up his clothes. Clothes that his mother had spent hours washing, ironing and folding neatly into his cupboard. Clothes that he chucked on the floor like a pig. Appropriate, that. A pig? Never a day passed when Truffle's parents did not beg him to pick up his clothes. And never a day passed when Truffle did not reply... I'd like to pick up a new set of parents. If you continue to turn my house into a pigsty, warned his mother, the clothes pigs will come. The what? Clothes pigs. They live in pigsties like this. I'm not scared of little piggies. Well, you should be. They'll trotter you away. What they lack in size, they make up for in cunning. Oh, come on. I mean, for a start, how are these clothes pigs going to get to me? Huh? Pigs can't walk through a city in broad daylight. The butchers would have them. Which merely confirmed how pig-ignorant Truffle was. That is to say, how ignorant he was of the power of pigs. <laughs> oink, oink. Then... The accident happened, and Truffle's life went applesauce-shaped. His mother was carrying a pile of washing downstairs when she tripped on a pant hill. Ah! Ah! Oh, help! I've broken my leg! But Truffle didn't care. Where's my supper? I'm hungry. Uh, call me an ambulance. You're an ambulance. Now get up and cook. But his mother couldn't lift a finger, so Truffle went out for fish and chips and left her on the floor. You're so lazy. What sort of example do you think you're setting me? Uh, don't, don't leave me. When Truffle came back, 
His mother was in traction. And his father was in the garden hanging out the washing. There you are. Ow! <laughs> How dare you leave your mother like that? She could have died! I could have died of hunger, you mean? That's enough now, Truffle! He squeaked in a voice so high that the clothesline quivered. It sang like a mournful violin string and sent a spooky hum down the line. From one garden to the next, the clothesline spoke to each other and carried his father's voice into the countryside like a jungle telegraph. Only this was no jungle. Incy, Wincy, Nibble and Titch pricked up their ears when they heard the call. I smell truffle! Sniffed Nibble. And, and we do have truffles. truffles! They squealed. Then the clothes pigs set off in a hurry for the big city. On the way, they stopped in a garden. They crawled into the laundry basket and played pegs with their legs sticking out stiffly at both ends until they were picked up and pegged out on the washing line. Until wet washing was pushed into their trotters. Until the coast was clear. Until they had enough clothes for one complete outfit. And this was how they entered the big city without being seen. They formed a pig pole by climbing on each other's shoulders and walked in with a... Morning! 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 And tipped their hat to the ladies. Morning! And nobody suspected a thing, least of all the butchers, who saw only a gentleman, small but impeccably polite. Put aside some sausages, my man. I'll be back. But, of course, he never was. The clothes pigs made their way to Truffle's house and sneaked in through the cat flap, where they found a pile of Truffle's clothes. <laughs> Who's there? called out Truffle's mother. But when Truffle's father came to investigate, all he saw was Truffle sitting at the table reading a comic. Oh, it's you, he said. I thought I heard oinking. For the rest of the evening, the clothes pigs made sure that they were never in the same room as Truffle. They rushed in and out of doors wearing Truffle's clothes, but they never met. Had they seen two Truffles, Truffle's parents might have smelled a rat. The clothes pigs crept into Truffle's bedroom and waited for him to come upstairs to bed. When he did, casting off his clothes behind him, he had no idea what was waiting below. What? What do you want? Pigs will eat anything. Bone, gristle, hair, teeth, even pyjamas. In the morning, the pigs had gone. Just like Truffle, in fact. They left his clothes in a heap by the side of the bed because clothes pigs may be many things, but they are not thieves. You want my advice? Pick up or pig? The choice is yours. <laughs> oink, oink. <laughs>